Hello, the Douala General Hospital, a fitting example of dedicated personnel, government investments and uh, reference to complications like treatment of cancers. But how this Category A facility saves itself from scandals like stolen babies and body parts is our angle with Professor Henry Name Luma, Director General of the hospital. Governance and follow-up. Welcome to the program. Welcome again. Patience first is their mantra, and how Professor Luma succeeds to get this done can be credited to his 32 years stay in the complex when he got in as consultant from London in 1991, growing through the ranks as chief of service and medical director before taking over from a 23 year long administration making him the second director general following the departure of the whites in 1996. The internist by specialty takes our questions right after this. The director general of the Douala General Hospital, Professor Henry Nameluma. Welcome to the CRTV. Thank you, Mr. Mukwele. It's a pleasure to have you in the Douala General Hospital. It's our pleasure indeed to be here. And uh, I see uh, the boss of this uh, premise is still in white jacket. Every other medical doctor here is in white jacket. Must you be in white jacket as the boss? <laughs> yes, the boss must lead by example. When you come in, in, it could be in a formal way. But so long as I'm in, the I'm in the hospital carrying out duties, going outside my hospital, I like to be in a white jacket, a white jacket and my name tag. So everybody knows that I'm a medical doctor. I can go to the ward. I can do ward rounds, do consultations as I want, even if my main obligation at present is administration. You are an internist and the details uh, are there. General Hospital Douala. I'm taking interest in the word general. Uh, what does it mean in the health infrastructure of Cameroon, general? Uh, before going into general, in Cameroon, hospitals are classified as first category hospitals, second category, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. And the first, gener uh, first category hospitals are mainly referral hospitals, for which we have uh, five or six of them, of which there's the Douala General Hospital, there's the Yaoundé General Hospital, and now there's the Garua General Hospital with others like the uh, uh, Gynecho Obstetric Hospitals. Okay, so these are first category hospitals. But the term general, as for General Douala General Hospital, means that we have all the major general specialties, all the major specialties like surgery and its specialties, uh, internal medicine specialties. So we have all of those obstetric gynecology, pediatrics. So we have the major uh, medical specialties in this hospital. Well, I would imagine is in itself a reference because uh, I think it's not only feeding Douala. In this case, uh, people will be coming from far and wide to meet any other specialist they are looking for. It is a referral hospital and serves the population of the littoral region yes. and the neighboring regions like the southwest, northwest, west and um, um, and goes beyond that because we have patients from the neighboring countries, from Equatorial Guinea, from Central African Republic, from Chad. So we have all of those patients coming in. And really, uh, when we look at our statistics, more than 25% of our patients are those who have been referred, who are coming because of a referral from another center to our center. What can we say are a few uh, breakthrough cases that this hospital has, hospital has handled uh, ever since we were here? I mean. The, in terms of maybe a case that would have been flown out and uh, the way handled here, can you, can you tell us? Yes, um, we have done a number of things for which I will not be able to give you a specific example. But in terms of specialties, when we take, for example, radio, uh, radiotherapy, treatment of cancers, this is the only hospital in our region which provides radiotherapy that in, in, in our region. 
radiotherapy, that's for cancer patients. You take this, uh, the field of cardiology. We do interventional cardiology. So if a patient had, for example, a heart attack or the, the arteries going into the, uh, the heart are blocked, here we can go in, dilate it and put a stent. Those are innovations for which uh, we are doing. We carry out cardiac surgery. Since uh, cardiac surgery was being carried out mainly in Shisong and it is not possible now, we carry out surgery. We bring teams who help us to carry out surgery, for which in the last few years we have done over 100 cases. We also have um, specialties like the neonatal units, which, you know, children, uh, babies born from uh, at times younger than 28 weeks, we've had, uh, we've had 26 weeks, uh, are being maintained and they are discharged from hospitals. So those are some of the things that we are doing. Um, and we have major surgeries which are being carried out. So there are a number of things which we are doing for which patients should have been evacuated. On what do you credit all of these um, successes? Uh, is it because we have uh, the personnel? Is it because we have the Professor Lumas who are in tennis of uh, very high reputations or equipment? It's multifactorial. There are many factors why um, we have some of these successes. The first one is the investment plan, the head of state uh, emergency plan. It renovated this hospital and we, it, it did it infrastructurally and also with equipment. So we have a number of services which are up to date. And I'll give you an example. Our ophthalmology service, our um, intensive care service, when we go to the intensive care, you will feel as though you are in somewhere else, not in this region when you go to that service. We are able to provide um, diagnostic uh, methods, um, uh, 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 MRIs, uh, we have two CT scans which help in making the diagnosis of certain uh, ailments. So we have a number of things which have come in place. The second one is human resources. It is difficult for us to be able to have good human resources in Cameroon. But so far, with the Ministry of Health, they make sure that some of our specialist hospitals have uh, the best doctors that we can have. So uh, that's why I say it's multifactorial the equipment, the investment in human resources, and also uh, communicating with people to know what we are doing in this environment. I can attest to that, Mr. Director General, Professor Luma. Let us see, it's so clean here, and it's so sophisticated, like you rightly said. Yet, it seems to be too elitist. Uh, can we say this hospital is open to every other Cameroonian, average Cameroonian? I'll go with the words you have used. You say it is clean, um, it's, it looks elitist, it is sophisticated. If I answer the question. When we provide health, health should be provided in a clean environment. Sanitation is very important. So the first thing we want is to have a clean environment. And it is not easy to have a clean environment. We work hard for this environment to be clean and we are happy with the way it looks. We would even like it to be cleaner. It's clean on the outside and we are working as well so that everywhere in this hospital should be clean. The second, sophisticated. Is it in terms of equipment? In terms of equipment, I agree it is sophisticated in terms of equipment because we have a lot of equipment which, uh, uh, which we don't find in other hospitals and we have a good maintenance policy for this equipment because you can also have them but the equipment is not functional. Okay, we used to have those type of problems. So you do that the, as a priority. Where, the city, where the CT scan could have been bad for four, five, six months, and that is why we have two CT scans, but now with the uh, maintenance, a maintenance policy that we have done for most of the uh, heavy equipment, we do not have that problem. Elitist is a word which is very controversial, elitist. If you say elitist in terms of my human resources, the doctors who come, yes, we have some of the best doctors in Cameroon here, but elitist we, not that we are only waiting to see a certain type of patient coming to the Douala General Hospital. The Douala General Hospital 
receives all categories of patients in all social groups. The in terms of accessibility. In terms of accessibility, I will tell you that it's a matter of ignorance. People do not know what uh, what happens in here. We have an emergency service which runs 24 hours a day. And in this emergency service, when you have a severe trauma, severe disease, you are admitted and no monetary transactions within the first 24 to 48 hours. Nobody will even ask you. The, the care, access to care is, is open for every category of Cameroonian. You know it also has negative uh, a negative part of it because some people who can pay may come but once a doctor says that this is an emergency we take you in and we treat you without asking for payment so i think that is a form of accessibility the second order form is that if you are referred from uh, the periphery you do not have the means you come in here we have to look for ways to treat you our our mantra is patient first patient first. So we look at the patient. We have social workers who go around and look at the background. Then we could tell you at the end that, okay, you, you, you'll be able to pay a percentage of what it costs you. On the other hand, there are people who can pay for their health care, but they may reach a certain level where they, they cannot go further. We would still reconsider that. So this hospital, the access is open. Director General, let me not cut you there. That, uh, is, is it because it is Professor Luma, the respectable and um, reputed internist that we know in this country talking? Is it because it is the boss, the Director General talking, uh, that it sounds so easy said than done? I'm asking this because uh, you need to tell us how you follow up this to the latter. Do you go behind the medical doctors? Firstly, it is not because I'm the one who is uh, in charge of this hospital, not at all. It's government policy. The Minister of Health has given directives. When we talk of humanization of care, those are some of the aspects which we see. That means you cannot, because a patient cannot afford, you leave the patient and say, go and bring your deposit. No, it is government policy, humanization of care. We have to do that. And it is prescribed. That is why we have social workers in the hospital. We have um, uh, a legal department, you know, because you may be able to explain that, okay, I will be able to pay every month this amount of money, okay, so it, you don't pay all of it up front. We have all of those facilities and it's open. So it is not because of the person talking to you. That is part of government policy. You're going to bear with me, the Director General of the Douala General Hospital. This program is called Governance and Follow-up, and that's why we're emphasizing. Now, let me, let, let me now elaborate on that uh, subject. Uh, big hospitals in Cameroon and maybe elsewhere are usually associated with scandals. If it is not a baby that is stolen here, it is a body part that is alleged to have been taken off or it is a patient who is held hostage in the hospital and for not being able to pay their bills. Now you're already talking about that, but I don't think this big and good-looking hospital will be spared of some of these things. Um, thanks, uh, Mr. Mukwele, for that question, because it is very important. All our hospitals can get into problems at any time. And with the advent of social media, it can be blown out of proportion. But it happens. And uh, we have had our own fair share of it. Can you start with some cases? I'll give you an example. About um, two months ago, um, somebody in the social media uh, wrote that we had um, sequestrated, we had imprisoned a lady who was referred from Mutengene uh, Baptist Health Center. And that um, we have we didn't take care of her, um, we did not accept her baby, and we have imprisoned her. Of course, I had to make sure, firstly, it was false, uh, because it never happened, and we know that there are people who come from the 
areas where we have problems, where we, have, we need to consider whether they can pay. If somebody lives from a zone with uh, problems and they come into this hospital, it is also an obligation for us to understand um, uh, that they don't have the means to pay and we go into an arrangement on how this can be paid or whether they will be let off it. So that was false information. So we have that. Some people... And why do you think this kind of false information come up? There are, many, there are many reasons. There are some people who will never accept good. They always see evil where there is good. Because in this case, uh, my doctors were very embarrassed. My staff. Because this lady was well received. She was transfused. She felt well. Her family accepted that she received good treatment. Then what happened? The husband was in the media asking for money even after this patient had been discharged. Was, you can understand that there may have been an ulterior motive to it. So there are many reasons why this happens. It could be uh, selfishness. It could be also because they don't want to accept that things are going well in a certain environment. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, it's again uh, multifactorial. Uh, so, so when was the last time a, a baby was alleged to have been stolen in this hospital or a body part uh, taken away from, uh, from a, a, a corpse? I don't know. Uh, we are happy that we've not, we've not had this problem. But everything is following the experiences of others. We have to make sure that we, 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 we have to make sure that we put in place a system whereby this cannot happen. What is the example? I told you in our dressing, we need to have a, a white coat, we need to have a badge. And everybody entering this hospital should be able to have put on a badge, even if you are a visitor. Okay. In the different services, we have put video su uh, surveillance, so we are able to see who is coming in, and in various sensitive areas, we have been able to put that. We have been trying to talk with our our, our, with, with, with our, our different workers, okay, our staff, to make sure that they understand the repercussions of what uh, their practice is. Because even in terms of receiving patients, we have to make sure that the patients are well received, we talk with them. It's not easy in this environment, but we are striving towards that, and we have to educate them on a number of issues which can bring problems. <laughs> I'll take you to a place of affluence in this hospital to find out how patients in dialysis are faring following renewed attention given them in this place. Brian Atanga from Bameda. But this is started when I was in South Africa since 2017. Yeah, so I decided to come back to Cameroon because I know my contact can help me more than South Africa. So. When I come back here, this is where I started my diaries. Hospital General Edouard. Very expensive in South Africa. When we started, it was the challenge was too much because to pay the diaries up and down was difficult. But now, and the way the government have organized everything for us now is very important and it helps us because now we pay 50,000 a year and we can see that if it continues like that, it will help us a lot. Compared that we're paying 10,000 a week. You signed a, a notice on uh, in the hospital in, in September 2020 talking about people should be careful about violence in the wards and all of that. What happens? Yes, exactly. Is it still continuing? Violence on patients or violence on the staff? Yes, violence is a problem. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm happy that you saw such a note because our staff also have to be seen as though we are protecting them, especially in the emergency department. Some people come drunk, and when uh, they come, they must be received within minutes. If they are not received, punches flow, or you can have a sudden death of a patient, and uh, somebody will react abnormally. It could be unintentional that they have acted. You see, blows are thrown, windows are broken, so we have that type of violence here, mainly in the emergency department, and so we were warning people who are coming in that there is a law against that, and we are going to institute it if you go, uh, if, if, if you don't behave well. 
You're watching Governance and Follow Up, hosting the Director General of the Douala General Hospital, Professor Henry Luma, in a facility that could be considered a five star if it were a hotel. I'm sure I'm correct, Prof. That is what the Cambrian patient should benefit from. Okay. Should benefit from good health care, which is carried out in a clean environment. Because it should also be in the environment where I would like to sleep on the bed, where I would like to be seen. So that is what we want our patient to offer to our patients. Director General, the, the state of Cameroon, like you mentioned earlier on, has been in a campaign uh, updating uh, hospitals in the country with equipment and uh, infrastructure. Has the, your hospital benefited from that in the recent months? Or it doesn't need that because from what we see, uh, it doesn't really need that much. Our hospital still needs a lot. Our hospital needs a lot. But we have benefited a lot. As I mentioned earlier, yeah. there was the uh, emergency plan of the head of state for which we had um, infrastructural uh, improvements as well as uh, our equipment. We have that. Okay. The hospital in itself has also invested in some aspects of it. And uh, recently, the government has invested uh, because we have, for example, an oxygen production unit and we have a functioning radiotherapy unit. They will still need more. Today, as we are talking, it's, it will be said uh, without uh, fear or favor that the radiotherapy unit has not functioned for one month because it is the only center in the region. Patients, 80 to 100 patients receive treatment daily, five, six days a week. It is only normal that such an equipment will need to be, uh, will, may come out with problems. So we need to set a policy of maintenance. That is, means that we have a project for which we should improve the care of cancer patients. So we are, this project will be forwarded so that in addition to what we have, we're going to more, now I'll use the word sophisticated treatment, a linear accelerator, to treat these cancers. And we have uh, three main units. We have a radiotherapy unit. We have a medical oncology unit where they receive chemotherapy. And we have a surgical unit because some of the cancers, uh, the, the way of treatment initially or eventually be through surgery. And in this hospital, we practice the three methods, okay? But as regards radiotherapy, we are using the cobalt source, which we have been using since uh, the early uh, 2000s. We've been using that. But we need to fine-tune that treatment with more sophisticated equipment so that will all still be radiotherapy. Okay. In terms of diagnostics, when I talk about nuclear medicine and so on, we need to have PET scans to help us to be able to pinpoint, you know, seedlings of cancers in various places. We need to have that. So as I said, as you say, this environment, you look at it and you think we have it all. No. We have a project so that cancer should be well taken care of from diagnosis to treatment. And it should be done the same as it is done abroad. So that is a place where we need to continue to ask the government for help to develop. Okay. Apart from that, still in terms of uh, equipment, we we in, we need to. We have the biggest hemodialysis center in Cameroon. That means that if there are a little bit over 1,000 uh, patients on hemodialysis. 300 of those patients are in the receive um, hemodialysis in the Douala General Hospital. That means that it is a big center where we dialyze 70 to 90 patients a day. So we have to go forward throughout uh, the day. We are, we are dialyzing patients. But we need to go further than that. You know, we need to go to the definitive treatment which is already being done in the Yaoundé General Hospital, which is renal transplantation. These are openings of things which need to be done for
for, for to complete what we are we are, we are doing. Let me take you back into the hemodialysis center of this hospital where patients in their comfort have got some declarations to make. J'étais prise dans le sens de dire merci au chef de l'État, au gouvernement, au personnel soignant, au directeur de l'hôpital général, parce que depuis un moment, nous, nous bénéficions de la couverture de santé universelle. Parce que pour nous, patients hémodialisés, avant que cette couverture ne prenne effet, c'était très pesant pour nous. Il fallait payer deux séances par semaine et c'était vraiment énorme. Déjà pour ce côté, vraiment, moi je dis énormément merci, c'est un grand soulagement. C'est comme si le Père Noël nous a visités en pleine année, vraiment, merci, les mots me manquent même. Je, je dis merci aux directeurs d'hôpital, les infirmiers. Before we go, can you drop a word to the public watching you on this program vis-à-vis -vis de Douala General Hospital? The Douala General Hospital, our mantra is patient first. We want to take care of patients. We are striving towards that because there will always be problems that we are striving towards that. The hospital is open. People may say it is expensive. I want them to compare the prices we are giving here compared to other centers. And the example I will give you is MRIs and CT scans. In the last two years, we have many more patients than we used to have because it is cheaper here than most places in Douala. There are 27 CT scans here in Douala, so you can imagine. But yet, being a government hospital, we are proud to know that patients are coming in to receive their treatment here. Thank you for your time. Mr. Mukwele, I'm very grateful that you came here. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you for coming. Just hope that. Governance and follow-up 